Right, I'm going to deal with these other shields now, the ones without any patterns on them. Um, this one I'm going to leave a little bit longer because it's white still drying. Uh, now, I'm going to do um, on this one here, um, I'm going to keep that one out, sorry, I'm going to do on this one here, um, one of the <clears throat> sort of E's that we saw, um, the Sigma, I think it is. Uh, I'm going to do this on this side, and then go to the center. Same thing this side. Dot to the center. Like that. Um, now, the other thing I'm going to do on this one is our sort of almost floral design in terms of this V shape, as I put it. Sort of like. V with a curve. There we go. Um, may not leave this as a black background, but I'm quite happy with that for the time being. Then um, a lot of the Etruscan shields have this sort of star effect. So I'm just going to slightly sketch out a few of these. I'm using Boneyard here just just to give me a, a good base but also without being funny if I don't like the end result it's, it's easier to cover. Um, that's fine. I don't want to do too much with some of these um, and then we're going to do a simple sort of geometric pattern on this one with circles and I'm going to leave that slightly a bit more. Now this one I'm going to do two snakes and I'm going to try and keep the the bends of the snake consistent as I go down. It's good enough for me. So I've got two more to do, um, and I'm thinking a sort of crescent shape here. Um, Yeah, do you know what? I don't like that. I'm going to have to do some thinking about this shape. Not so keen on that one. So what I might do is just change this one to a circular pattern. For the time being, and um, on this one here, which will probably end up being a different color, but just for the time being, what do I think of that as a as a style? And I think I think I'm going to live with that one. Oops, that sort of effect maybe into the center a bit more. I think we'll be fine. Um, we're just going to revisit this one that we had a minute ago. Just give it a proper little sort of petal shape. To avoid any confusion as to what that might look like.
And to be honest, I'm not following my own basic principles here, which is about making sure that you always have a good point of reference to work from. Because when I get in trouble, or the times I get in trouble really tends to be mainly when I try and go freestyling it. But actually, I think for the time being, that's not too terrible. So we'll be moving back to this one again, just to keep the sort of tempo up. I'm going to put some black hair in on this one um, and then put the, the red tongue in and see what I think. OK, so on these Gorgon's um, sort of <clears throat> faces, uh, let me just move it out of the way, the hair sort of, uh, if I get the Gorgon in style, the hair sort of uses this sort of ringlet style. So we're going to try and do something similar to that on ours. And I've got fairly watery paint at the moment. Apologies, I'm getting quite a lot of reflection trying to do this from uh, from this angle, so I don't know quite what I'm achieving here. But um, getting a bit more, and then we want to create a little bit of a waviness back here. So it doesn't look too uh, flat, as it were. So I'm going to try and keep that going up there. And alternating the sections. Hmm. OK, so. One of the other things I'm going to do here, apologies if you can't see me doing this too well, is uh, reaffirm these black lines around the face, uh, and in particular around the mouth, sorry, so that we bring that to the fore. Here we go. Okay. Um, there's a little bit on this one of uh, sort of jowling going on. Uh, it's quite hard to do that without it looking silly. Um, so I might have to come back and overpaint that in a bit in a, in a while. But I need to put this. Uh, this red tongue on down here. So let's do that next. Okay, so I fixed up, um, or oh, sorry, shaken up one of the Reaper triads. And uh, I'll try and see what effect. That has in terms of our Gorgon. Okay, and um, see, so I need to get these eyes done as well. So let's uh, see what that looks like. 
On the original, these are very much eyes, if you see what I mean, as in human style eyes. So, um, need to think about what this looks like. Okay. And whilst I'm here, have a little play with the impression of teeth that we've got here. Okay. It's looking a little bit better. Need to do something to brighten up this red, but we'll come back to that shortly. Um, just for convenience while I'm here, quick clean of the brush. Okay, I'm just going to get some of the flesh in here, sort that out. Okay. So, just for completeness, I want to get into here, get rid of that white background. Also, I want to just lose that monobrow effect created there because it's not on the original. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of a very thin coverage on that little line there. But I think that will make a bit of a difference. So while I'm on the on the move on the mode of uh, finishing this one off, let's, <clears throat> let's have a look at what a brighter red on that tongue will do for us. Okay, so I've gone for a little bit of Vallejo uh, flat red here. As you can see, it's very red. Uh, I've also, to be honest, donned my Vision Aid here so I can get a little bit more precise. Because doing this on camera is actually quite interesting. I'm getting a better picture on the camera than I was able to see in real life, as it were. I'm going to leave that like that. I'm also, while I've got this red, I'm going to just try a couple of these guys and see what I think in terms of the brightness. Because, I, again, I want a variation between the red that I've got on the shields, because I think that would be more historical. And um, let's have a little look here, where we've got this sort of uh, lion type shape. This may not be the best one I could have chosen for this, actually, because if you're not as confident about the the pattern you've created, don't accentuate the, the issue by putting a stark contrast in on the paints, because you'll just bring attention, as I've done, to a, a less than smooth portrayal of the animal, in this case. But Red has that quality of, of drawing darker, a darker background anyway. And um, we can always go back and sort a few things out if I need to.
and I will be going over the the white portion of that that uh, that red. Now, to be honest, I, although I said I was going to try that bright red, um, I think that's too bright, and um, hopefully that will dry a bit darker. So I'm going to get the um, slightly. Uh, what's this one? This one is a, a mid. I call this a mid coat. It's just a standard nine two six red. So I'm going to try a couple of the other ones with that one, and uh, let you know what that looks like. Okay, so I didn't like the look of um, that red, so I've actually gone for this carmine red, uh, a nine oh eight. And I think this might be the right balance in terms of the amount of redness that I want and the amount of brightness. So let's have a. And I haven't really done too much in terms of mixing this because I'm I'm very happy for it to be um, something that I put on a few layers with, or oh, sorry, that I use in a cup, you know, in a sort of layered fashion, rather than expect miracles on the first coat. Very happy to build it up. I think I should have used my magnifier a little bit before now because there's a few areas on these that I'm not happy with. But again, I keep going back to the same point. It's about tabletop distance and the overall impression we create. And this will still work very nicely for the vast majority of them, I believe. And here I'm magnifying something which, you know, on the tabletop, it's going to be quite a, a distance away from the viewer. And even if they pick it up, we're looking at this through the magnification of the camera on screen and through the uh, headset I'm wearing with glasses that are magnifying. I think this is a one point eight magnification. But if you do happen to come across somebody who insists on picking it up and using a magnifying glass, then fair enough, but that's not my usual experience when I'm playing war games. Okay, and again there I'm not going too far into the edges because I want to create that depth. So I'm just going to carry on doing these guys. Um, I'll wh whiz around these and uh, they, let you have a look at the finished art. Cool. So I think I may have lost the camera there for a bit, but uh, what I've done is I've got the original Reaper 934 uh, triad. Um, sorry, not 934, 134. Uh, it's actually 9134. And I've gone over this one, uh, just trying to tone down that red. And as I said, I'm not particularly impressed with the picture that I've created there, but just by doing that darker red, it will just take the, the you know the eye off of it a little bit and won't make it quite so stark in terms of uh, what people actually see from a distance. And we'll be going over the white again shortly anyway. So as I say, if we look up here at the sort of distance you're going to see that on from the tabletop, they're not too bad. This one's probably a bit bold, but I'm going to live with it. Um, I don't mind that at all. I'm going to put a gold edge around this one 
But generally speaking, you know, as I say, from that sort of tabletop distance, uh, I'm I'm quite pleased. So I'll carry on and pull out some of these and give you guys a shout back when I've done that. Thanks. Okay, so I've got some uh, Vallejo Deep Green, um, which is actually, I think I've labelled as a Russian Napoleonic Green, um, but we'll um, just be using that temporarily, or quickly, rather than temporarily, quickly, uses the bright green on this uh, wreath that I've done here, and I'm going to try and create the leaf effect a little bit better. A little bit more defined, shall we say? What I'll be doing after this is going over it with the white just to create a much more precise finish. But for now, I'm just trying to pick out, not exactly highlight, but just pick out some of the key sort of leafy features um, and that's fine for that one given that I've got a green here um, what I might do is, is actually turn this one into a green um, for no other reason then I need to think of a better color for this and uh, green may actually do quite well Oops. I'm going to try and get these consistent. Okay. I'll probably put some fillers in around here. Um, I'm going to come back and visit this one because I'm not so keen on that one either. Um, so I think in terms of just um, shapes etc i'm fine with these because these are second class troops um the majority of these shields will be in the in the back as it were um so i used i used a moss um as the base on this one so i'm going to get that back out again and try and improve this sort of animalistic shape i've got here um and then i'll let you know uh, how i get on Right, so what I'm doing now is just going around with the top coat of the Foundry Triad, um, which is the C, um, and I think it's the 30, uh, sorry, 33C. Um, and, and as you can see, the minute you kind of tidy up the, the edges, um, not only do you get a bit of depth, but it really starts to, to lift the whole shield. So I'm just going to carry on doing this around these white ones in particular <coughs> excuse me and then I have a think about whether I want to do the edge of the shield 
uh, gold or, or or perhaps even red just to give us a little bit of contrast but for now I'm just concentrating on getting this you know without being funny this sort of cleaner this tidier look um, that this is giving me You might ask why did I put the the mid uh, of the color of the triad on to go around in the first place? Well, the honest answer is I just find that easier um, to create this sort of impression when I come back round with the the top coat. But also, it um, if it goes horribly wrong, it's easier to blend that line in rather than a stark white which is what I've got here now okay and again if we sort of focus on what that's going to look like at tabletop distance I'm very happy with that so I'm going to go around some of these and just pick out the uh, the white um, in the same way that I've just gone around the edges and we're now going to concentrate on going inside and, and actually, hopefully, causing creating these, uh, a, well, creating more definition on these shields. Um, and it's a, it's almost like going in reverse, really. This is a trireme, so it needs a front spike, front ram, sorry. Yeah. Again, you know, looking back there, starting to get a decent shape to it. There is an opportunity to draw the eye of the viewer in the way that you want want to uh, them to view the shield. Uh, so here I've, I'm just correcting the fact that it's not particularly level. That's easy to do. Okay, and again, you know, concentrate on what that looks like from a distance pretty pleased with that so yeah i'm going to carry on with these guys now and um give you a shout back <laughs> 